Okay, class, uh, this is honors pre-calculus. Right now we have uh, Friday, September 11th. I'm not here right now. I had to go to a meeting at the IU4, so I'm going to show you a little lesson on page 704, which is section 2 of chapter 11. Now, I think this lesson, um, you guys might see it a little bit more familiar than section 1. So, what I want you to do is go to page 704, please. Okay, so I'm going to kind of explain to you a couple examples, and after that, we'll give you some opportunity to learn. All right, looking at page 704, it's exponential growth function. Now, right here, I have something called a power function, and right here, I have something called an exponential function. What's the difference? Uh, the power function is nothing but a variable, an, a control variable with an exponent above it. But an exponential function, the unknown is actually the exponent. Okay, so your control variable now is in the second level, the exponential level. And that makes a big difference. Now the graph of an exponential looks like one of these two down here. Uh, like a jet fighter taking off, if you remember that. Or a jet fighter landing. Now the way we're going to graph it is obviously on a calculator. But if you do not have a calculator at home, to do the homework or you did not download the flash debugger from Edline you see what we have on page 704 you can just graph a bunch of dots like a table graph it like I have here on the right side and just after you graph a bunch of dots like this then you can uh, connect the dots so you always have the ability to graph something by plugging in points okay so whether you have a calculator or not you have to do the graphing portion of the uh, of the homework okay all right so what we're looking for on page 705 is some characteristics of uh, the graph y equals b to the x power that's an exponential function so what are some characteristics here we have something called growth okay now it's growth when our b is greater than one that's how you know this is going to be growth your b is greater than one and it's like an asymptote on the x-axis here. You guys remember what asymptote means. And your b is greater than 1. Now, that's going to be growth. Decay means that your b is less than 1. And it's going to become asymptotal to the right here on the x-axis. And it's actually looking like a jet fly, jet fighter landing okay that's going to be decay so if I have something like this y equals 2 to the x power that's growth because of the base being greater than 1 and if I have y uh, I'm sorry let's say uh, yeah y is equal to uh, 1 half to the x power that's going to be decay alright now at the bottom of page 705 what you have is, on the bottom page 705, you have what is a, a vertical shift. What happens when you add something at the end of any function? It doesn't have to be this one. And what that means is it just moves it up or down. Okay, and you can plug that into your calculator and test that. Uh, this has been moved up 1 because my k was positive 1. That's the first graph. And down here, this has been moved down 1 from the parent graph. And that would be because my k is negative 1. All right. Now the inverse function, if you turn the page to 706, the inverse function okay, is at the top of page 706. If you have a negative in front of your base, what that does, it basically flips it across the x-axis. It's a reflection across the x-axis. Now whether you have decay with a negative in front or growth with a negative in front that's just going to be a reflection across the x-axis that's what happens when you have this negative alright now let's move on and do a couple examples then we'll get to some uh, to some homework at the bottom of page 706 we have something called the exponential growth or decay formula so you have to know what each one of these pieces represents okay this n sub o is my original amount Okay, sorry for the writing. That's my original amount. This one represents 100%. Okay, my R is a percentage as a decimal. 
and you really can't see this too well here that's the letter T and this T represents time that is my time all right if I was doing example three look at that example three you have um, it says suppose that researchers estimate that the initial population of Aurora uh, whatever that is in a colony is 500 so 500 is my initial amount okay and then from there I put the one because I know I'm gonna have a one now after that I have either a plus or a minus sign now that plus or minus sign is gonna be for growth or decay so if I have growth what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the percentage if I have decay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract the percentage both as a decimal so growth means you add and decay means you subtract so right now since we have growth we're gonna go add and the percentage is 14 percent per week so that comes in as a 0.14 and then I'm gonna have a little carrot here which is the exponent and that is for 22 weeks so time can be in weeks or days or years or months or whatever the problem gives you so what you do now is you basically plug that into the calculator okay just like you see it and then you have your answer all right okay and that becomes the answer all right now in the same sense you have compound interest and this comes with uh, you, when you're dealing with money so when you're dealing with money example four you need to know what these pieces are and you have to memorize these formulas so compound interest this is going to be the principal dollar amount right there that rate is going to be a percentage this uh, n that you see both here these ends that's going to be the compounding period okay it's the compounding period all right now the compounding period could be if you have it per year whoops sorry per year that's going to equal one if you have it per month that would equal 12 for example if you have per day that will equal 365 and so forth. If you have per quarter, there's four quarters in a year. Semi-annually is two times a year. And then T is going to be time. All right. Now, when we have compound interest, it's going to be growth. We don't put our money into an account expecting to lose it. It's not like the stock market. All right. So what you have here is uh, example four, where they say you have two thousand dollars invested so obviously that's your principal two thousand dollars and you put your one in and you put your plus it's invested at five percent put that in as a decimal and then your compounding period it says five percent compounded daily so you put 365 in place of your n then you need carrot and in your calculator don't forget you need a parenthesis around the multiple exponent all right so my uh, n is still 365 and we're going to keep this in the account for seven years now you plug that into the calculator and that'll give you your answer so I have 2000 parenthesis whoops sorry 2000 parenthesis 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 365 there you go carrot parenthesis 365 times 7 you hit enter and that's how much money you have at the end of seven years okay so that's compound interest all right all right last thing if you look at example five we also have graphing with inequalities and the way that works is you need to do you need to get some shading all right so if my problem is like this y is less than 2 to the x power plus 1, I'm just going to graph it like I would normally in shade below. Now the way that works on the calculator is like this. You have to know where the windshield wiper is. So what you would do is you type in 2 caret x plus 1 
you move your cursor all the way over to the left until you see the windshield wiper moving. Okay, like that. Alright, hopefully it's going to move. I think it's frozen. Okay. So the windshield wiper is moving. You hit enter once, you get a bold line. Enter again. The triangle above means shading above is greater. And enter again. Shading below is less than. Then you hit graph. And there's your graph on the calculator. Okay. Now, what you have to be able to do is when you draw your graph, you have to be able to know whether or not the lines are dotted. The calculator is not going to show you that. So because I have no bar at all, that needs to be dotted line. No bar. Okay? That means dotted line. Alright? Okay, so... Um, Part of the homework is to graph, and again, if you did not download the Flash Debugger, you should do that on Edline. Don't forget that Monday you will have your Perfect Squares quiz, as well as your cubes, and uh, up from 1 to 20, and also 25. And next week we'll have the Foresight Test. Your opportunity to learn for the weekend is page 708, 1 through 9, and then you can do 11 through 25 odd, okay? 11 through 25 odd, okay? Have a good weekend, and thank you for your attention. The rest of the class period, you can just finish this homework. Thank you very much.